It was a normal Monday afternoon. You know, I was doing the jobs that I always do. I was loading straw from one trailer onto another lorry. So I brought the loader around. Uh, the two lads that were with me, they were at the far side of the trailer taking the lorry straps off. But being a bit impatient that I was, I got out of the loader and started to pull the strap down uh, to speed the job up. And at that stage, the loader rolled forward and I felt a uh, prod my back and I turned around slightly to see what it was. Um, the spike basically went straight through. When I realised Jonathan was injured, um, I actually was in the office, I could hear him shout. So um, it sounded quite serious. I ran directly out to him. <laughs> The call came in just saying it was an accident on a farm up near Wisbeach. We obviously mobilised um, quite quickly from here as we do. Um, didn't really know an awful lot about it. By the time we'd taken off and got established in flight and stuff, it was pretty much time to come into land. So not a lot of time to actually prejudge anything or get any more information around the call. And it was only really once we landed and made our way to the patient that the sort of magnitude of the job became apparent to us as a crew. When I first actually realised the air ambulance was there, I actually looked up and my initial reaction was, thank you God, thank you for sending your angels. We arrived, it was late afternoon, this sort of time of year, it was getting dark. We landed in a field adjacent to the farm. I remember thinking it was very muddy and the whole farmyard was full of emergency service vehicles, fire service, police, ambulance vehicles. Uh, we were aware that somebody had been injured with a forklift, uh, but it was only when we got on scene that we established that Jonathan was actually still stuck on one of the tines. And this was a time critical injury, but also a very challenging one, uh, not only for the emergency services, but actually for Jonathan uh, and his wife, Wendy. Uh, and in their credit, uh, they were incredibly stoic, and I know uh, John managed to stand there for uh, up to one hour before we could get him into a more comfortable, safe position. Uh, and I vividly remember Wendy keeping it together in front of him to support him, and then whenever the emotions got high, stepping away to, uh, to, to, to perhaps cry for a moment and then coming back. Whilst Jonathan was being treated, it was chaotic. There was fire engines, <laughs> there was um, the air ambulance, there was ambulances, there was police, there was a lot of lights, there was a lot of people, um, you know, it, it, was, it, was, it was chaotic um, and it was surreal and to be honest, um, you do often think about how do people feel during accidents and what's it like for them and all I can say is it's like living your worst nightmare. We were able to support Jonathan physically and get an ambulance trolley under him to take the weight off of his legs whilst not moving him on the time and that allowed us to give some advanced pain relief to keep him comfortable but safe and then also work with the Fire and Rescue Service in order to release him from the end of the forklift. The odds of Jonathan surviving I felt were quite low. Um, the spike had gone in quite close to his spine at the back, it exited right through the front of his chest. We were mindful that the liver was on a, you know, on the wound track. His major blood vessels here, aorta, inferior vena cava, his heart, all these organs were all on the potential track that the spike had taken. And if the spike had moved or he moved off the spike, then catastrophic bleeding and death could have ensued really quickly. And we were very mindful of that. On scene, a number of things were going through our head, and the obvious one uh, was how we were going to release Jonathan from uh, from his trapped state with the Fire and Rescue Service. Once we made a plan for releasing him, we then needed to anticipate him possibly needing a blood transfusion pre-hospital, uh, and also which hospital would be best place to manage him. I was just thinking all the time, I need to be strong here for Wendy and the girls. Like I have to get better. I this can't be the end, you know, and I was just so grateful to have such knowledgeable people there that knew what they were doing. The fire brigade were instrumental without a shadow of doubt. They got the lights up, they had um, obviously a frame on the machinery, 
um, and they were there then to cut the, the spike off so Jonathan could then be released. As a team we made the decision that Jonathan needed to go to the Major Trauma Centre at Adam Brooks. We took him by road. It took about an hour to drive him there, um, taking due care all the way. But with the additional drugs, blood products and equipment that we had available, we felt comfortable that it was worth the risk. After the incident, we were informed that, uh, that Jonathan had survived surgery, which was great news. And incredibly, uh, the Tyne had managed to, to miss all but two structures. So he was, in one way, incredibly unlucky, and in other ways, incredibly lucky. Um, and his subsequent two weeks stay in hospital was just incredible. And, and that's not surprising, considering how stoic he was and the, the mental attitude that he showed on the day, and that carried him through his recovery. Seeing Jonathan and Wendy turn up today was absolutely amazing. Uh, we've obviously been having him in our thoughts since the injury happened. Uh, and for them to both turn up today, um, all full of smiles, living their lives, talking about their family, massive, massive respect to both of them. And it's been a really positive um, event for us as a team as well. We obviously were aware of the air ambulance, but it's only that second that you need them, that they're there with your loved one, saving your loved one's life, that you really, really actually appreciate the importance of the air ambulance. I did not been to the air ambulance team. Uh, I think the whole situation could be totally different. For us as a family, our lives could have been dramatically changed on the 26th of October. Um, the girls could have lost their daddy and I could have lost my husband. And when you're faced with that, your world is literally falling around you. The East Anglian Air Ambulance is a charity and it completely relies on the generous donations of people like you, the public that we serve. What happened to me was such an unusual accident, you know, I'm just so grateful to all the teams involved. Thank you to the air ambulance, the ambulance, the fire brigade, the police, the surgeons and all their teams, the nurses and all the aftercare, just thank you so much. I do often say to Jonathan, uh, you've had a second chance, you technically should not be here, so live your best life, live the best life you can, whilst you can.